Okay, so we're going to do like a post-production on a Jack Bridgeland style because loads of people have asked for it. But there's a couple of things I need to go through first. The best way to achieve these results is obviously to light with the post-production in mind, which is the whole thing that Jack Bridgeland does. And we've looked at that in some detail about how he gets extra light into his shadow areas, how he gets those really strong highlights, how he layers light, how he's got a lot of light going into the image. That's really important. So to kind of get this to work, I've gone back into my archive and found a shoot that I've got, which is sort of similar. Like it's a lot of layered light. So the image on the right of Cassie is obviously my image that I shot 2015. All of Jack's amazing work is on the left-hand side. I'm just showing you those now to give you an idea. It's sort of a similar area. It's not the same, but a similar area. There's some hot highlights in there. I'm pushing light into the shadow. It's not as extreme as his lighting range. It's the closest shoot I've got that's got sort of similar color feel to it. It's got strong backgrounds, and it's just a way to show some of the post-production you could do on the images. There's no point doing this as an output from the simulation because it's just not going to have the same level of detail. But let's just start with a bit of a look at some of the other imagery he's got because I've made some color swatches. The colors go really quite far in his picture, like really far away from what is real or authentic. The bottom swatch on here is like the darker skin tone. The top swatch is the strong highlight in the hair. And then the middle swatch is the highlight that's on the arm. So it's good to see like the level of color he's getting and how far the post-production is being pushed. When it all fits together, it's kind of hard to sometimes see how separate those colors are. Same with this one, like for a shadow skin tone, like that's a really dark red brown around like the neck area. Then that mid-tone is like what the thigh is. The lighter color is obviously what the highlight is in the hair and slightly on the knee. So you can see he's really pushing quite far with the colors. So I've just pulled out like the mid-tone of the skin so you can see it's really red. The white at the top is the sunglasses. So that's like pure white. There's no way to get that in one shot yet also have the skin tone that same color. So what I'm trying to show you here is there's a lot of like separate color work that's being done. And then the mid-tone is the hand. And so we know where the light's coming from in this picture, and we know there's colored light going into the face. So it's about pulling that apart in post-production afterwards. And same with this one, the, the bottom swatch, it's like the darker shadow tone, the mid-tone, and then the highlight. They're really reddish browns. They're not anywhere near natural skin tone for that model. And the same with the Charlie XCX one. You know, some of this could be done with filters, it could be done with gels, it could be done in post-production, or it could be a combination of those things. Like this one, if you really look at it, there's no like clarity to the skin. Maybe in capture or the clarity is pushed all the way down. You know, maybe there's like a soft focus filter on there. Or maybe again, that's all taken out in post-production because there's no like skin pores, for example. This is kind of useful to see like how heavy that shadow tone of the skin really is. So that bottom swatch is just a skin tone and it's like really dark brown black. Then the mid skin tone is orange and then the white is like a pink white. So again, just to highlight, this is like post-production that's happening. I don't know his post-production process in as much as like I haven't been involved in it. I don't speak to his retouches or anything like that. It's just what we're looking at. So I thought those color swatches are useful to see how far you need to push your imagery and why you need good quality imagery at the beginning because otherwise it begins to kind of just degrade the picture and fall apart. So my image on the right hand side was never intended to like push it that far with the post-production. But in general, like some of the colors, the styling is sort of similar to what he's got. There's that kind of cartoony look to it. The other thing I think that's really important with this is there's a lot of feeling that his pictures are like super high contrast, super high saturation. But I think a lot of that is confusing because you're looking at it on a like a backlit screen. The way I like to think of his colors is if you imagine like cartoon style, as he talks about, but as printed on paper, not on a screen. So actually they're quite flat. There's not huge levels of contrast going across the picture. So the temptation is to kind of just push the saturation, but that's not going to help you so much. Really, you want to flatten that down. Also, the last thing that I should flag before I start really showing this is like, I'm not a retoucher by trade. I've worked with a lot of retouchers. I've had retouchers in my teams before. But again, photographers probably have a bad way of working as opposed to a retoucher. If there's bits of this you look at and go, that's a horrible way of doing it, feel free to tell me. I know people will tell me anyway. But I'm just saying like photography, primarily my thing, not retouching. What we'll see in this is kind of like a live version of it. So it took me like 20 minutes, right? But obviously you would spend a lot more time making accurate masks, making more accurate color layers, but it's the basics and it should work fine as long as you've got a lot of light going into your pictures at the beginning. Okay, so here we got the basic screen, right? On the right hand side, you'll see what I'm doing with layers and levels and so on. I'm just gonna make three folders at the beginning. I'm gonna make colors, a curves folder, and I'm gonna call it like a contrast folder. I'm gonna stick to those because I'm gonna work in that layer principle 
So let's do colors first. We're going to go selective color, but I've just gone in selective color and gone into the whites first of all. And I'm taking the red out the whites. I'm taking the black out the whites if there is any. I'm kind of trying to get it to a little bit more of like a pure white. It won't stay that way completely, but just so I can control that a little bit. And I'm going to put that as a color layer. I'm going to make a second selective color layer. And I'm going to go into the neutrals. So in general, I want this to be like more magenta because that's the kind of skin tone he's going for. And I want to push up the yellows a little bit just so it doesn't like go super red and break apart too much. Putting that as color instead of a normal layer. And let's go into color balance. We're going to start with shadows. There's always loads of red in his shadows. And we can see the hair has got quite a lot of red. I'm sort of getting, I want that hair, I want that red to kind of bleed around because again, that also happens quite a lot in his images. There's like a, uh, there's like a color bleed between the shadows and the dark areas. You notice there's no like true black now. And then let's look at midtones. I'm doing less work in the midtones here. I'm putting a bit more green into it and I'm putting some blue into it. I want separation between my midtones and my shadows and then the highlights. I'm putting more cyan into the highlights because I don't want them to go red. And I'm putting blue towards my highlights. So if anything, I want those highlights to be fairly cool. Like his highlights are not always super cool as I've seen, as I showed you in the swatches. Some of them are pink, for example, or orange. There's maybe a misconception that his highlight is always like a blue white, but it's not. And then I'm just gonna turn those layers on off so I can see roughly where I am with them. I'm gonna turn that folder off and I'm gonna go into curves. Again, you may have different ways of working. This is just how I'm doing it quickly. So I'm gonna bring a curves layer in. I'm gonna lift the blacks up. And when I've lifted them up, I'm gonna pull that down again. So I've lost the like far end of the blacks. So it's not super heavy black. That mid tone of the curve, I'm gonna pull it down again. So I've got a little bit more contrast to it. And then I'm gonna recover those highlights a little bit. Then I'm gonna bring levels up. You'll have to just play around with curves and see what feels natural to you. And again, it's not, it shouldn't be about like copying someone's style. It's about getting an image that works for the lighting that you've got in mind, the concept, the picture. So levels and bringing the black back a little bit. Like I always vary between what I want to do with curves and what I want to do with levels. Oh yeah, I'm putting my curves layer as luminosity. I'm going to pull the exposure down a little bit. And just offset it slightly. Then I'm going to turn everything off again and go to my contrast. So let's go to vibrance. Put everything back on. Okay, now I just want to make opacity adjustments for my folders. And then I'm going to tweak those by going into the individual changes I've made within the folder and change the opacity of those. Again, you'll have to kind of play that by what feel you want for your picture. So if we're looking at like the curves folder, let's say I bring that overall opacity for the folder down to like 80%. I then may bring like the exposure level opacity down to like 30% or 80%, depending on what works best. So like my curves adjustment is now around 70%. Now I'm going to copy the background layer. I'm going to turn the original off so I've always got that so I can refer back to it if I need to. I'm just going to repair quickly like the hair and things because I want the image to look a little bit better just for the rest of this like comparison tutorial. I wouldn't normally do it like this but I'm just like blocking out the gaps a bit in the hair so that yellow doesn't become distracting when we make adjustments to it. Like I said, this is kind of real time so it's messy but you'll get the idea. I would just clean up the skin a little bit and I just do a couple of bits of that so you can see roughly what I'm doing. I'm not going to go through how to do skin repair again. I wouldn't normally do it like this and I try not to like retouch too much of things. I'm going to copy that repair layer. So this is the one thing that because I'm not shooting like a soft focus or anything like that, I'm not taking the clarity out, I'm going to make a really rough cut out of the face and I'm going to put a Gaussian blur on it. Again, I wouldn't normally like do it this way, but I just want to knock some of that texture back so it's similar to how he's got it in his imagery. Like I like texture and skin tone and seeing pores and stuff in my photo. And this is just rough, right? So I copy the face, cut out the face. I put a Gaussian blur on it. I put like too much of the Gaussian blur on. So now obviously everything's disappeared over the face. Make a mask. Fill it with black and then just paint it with a low opacity white tool, white paintbrush. 
Again, there's many other ways of doing this, but this is just to show you roughly where I needed to get it to. So let's put that brush on like, I don't know, 40% or something and just begin to like paint through the skin. So the Gaussian blur is coming back into the image. It's rough, it's messy, but it's like pushing that texture back a little bit, like the Charlie XCX image that he's got. And you can refine the mask later. Okay, so then I'm gonna bring that layer opacity right down. So it's at like 30% or something right now just so it pushes that texture back a little bit. Now we're gonna look at the background. I think his background adjustments will be built out in Capture, but then worked on in obviously post afterwards. I'm gonna make a really rough and messy mask now. So I'm just selecting the background and I'm gonna put a gradient on that because essentially I just wanna knock that background back. I wanna take out some of the color saturation. And this is where I think you can get that like paper feel rather than like a backlit screen. Again, you could probably do this with shadow and highlight, and I'm going to drop some noise into it. Again, I put, I put this like quite extreme at the beginning, just so we can see what we've got. Yeah, so like really full on noise right now. I drop those into a folder, call it background. And again, I'm going to change the opacity of the overall folder. So everything sits back again. And then I should have done this the first way around, but I'm just going to make a curves layer. I'm going to drop the same mask onto it that I use for like cutting out the subject in the background. Let me just pause it there so we can see, right? That's a bad cutout and you can see where it's not around the hair, but we would refine that obviously. But this is just to get that mask so it's on my curves layer now. And it's just sitting that background away from the subject. So we just really like pulled some of the contrast out of it. We pulled some of the saturation out of it. We've made it more grainy. And that background layer is sitting under all the other adjustments so that it doesn't get confused with the colors. Just compare both of those. Like it's always good to make sure you haven't gone too far, right? Turn your folders on and off to see, okay, well, like what was the beginning position of this? How does it look now? And then we're kind of there. And now I just want to make some like final adjustments, right? So I've got like the basics of everything I'm sort of happy with. I'm going to bring up Channel Mixer. I'm going to make some like fine tune adjustments that are going to be rough in Color Mixer. And then I'm going to begin to refine it with Selective Color or Color Balance again. So I'm kind of warming up the overall skin tone, putting more red back into it, cleaning up the highlights a little bit so we're closer to a clear white. I'm going to check that white again. I put all the black into the white just to see what changes. The t-shirt, the roll neck, sorry, is looking fine. I don't want like complete separation with the highlights under the eyes. You don't want the image to obviously like fall apart. I don't want the blacks to go too far. I pulled a little bit more out of the blacks now. And I've taken a sign out. I don't want the blue black, but I'm going to push more magenta into it. I'm pushing more into the warmth of the reds now. Let's go back into the neutrals. Touch magenta and a touch of yellow. Just take a little bit of that black out again. And again with that, I'm refining the opacity so that I get a balance of what I like between the channel mixer and the selective color. And I'm gonna do last curves. And this is where I can refine that black again if I need to, that shadow area. I can pull those highlights back and just sort of get that balance between like saturation, highlight and shadow. And let's go into vibrance again. We can take the vibrance down and push the saturation up. And then that layer is gonna have like 60% opacity. So this is just like fine tuning now. Then I just wanna look at that background a little bit more, see if I can get that background to be more muted, too warm now. The thing with this background and the the styling is that there's meant to be similar color references, but obviously his backgrounds tend to be really muted. So I'm going to try and like pull away from what I originally intended and push that background. So it's less in the same register as the styling. So I'm like taking the cyan out of the blue, putting magenta into it again, just everything and make it more dull. And normally you would mask off like the styling or the, the jacket at the same time. So you're not affecting like any other cyan in the picture. And then that's all the changes. I'm just going to go through all the opacities again and make sure that it all sits together and I haven't made like a big mistake somewhere. Again, normally like you would zoom in a lot, check that you haven't got like weird fringing or banding or anything happening because there's some quite extreme adjustments here. And even on a good file, you're going to notice the image begins to kind of break up if you're not careful. So like I said, this is the basics, but fast. And I'm like, I do struggle with the color balance because like I said, I like more realistic skin tone. So like every time I put too much magenta in, I'm like, oh, you need to kind of calm that down. But I'm trying to get a similar register here to 
reference images. Let's put everything in one big folder. And call it final and let's just turn everything on and off so we can see where do we get to? What did we change? How close is it? What's breaking up? Is the highlight okay? And it's, it's close. It's like in a similar, like for 20 minutes, it's fine. Hopefully that gives an idea of the things that you would look to do. The really important thing is like when you're looking at someone's imagery, especially someone like Jack Bridgman, who's lighting with a very particular style in mind, look really intensely at the imagery. That color switching is quite a good idea because actually what you might think of say is a black shadow isn't a black shadow, it's like a red shadow or a blue shadow. And the same with the highlights, you know, his highlights, like I said, they're not always like blue white, sometimes they're pink white. It's really good to see like, what is the spectrum of colors that he's using within one image? How much contrast there is within one picture? He's putting extra light into the shadows because he knows what he's gonna do with like crushing the contrast or flattening the blacks out. Those things are really important. Tricky using like one of my own pictures to do this because I'm always fighting with the idea of what I had in mind when I was shooting it. I think it gives a similar reference and like I said, hopefully that's useful and, and hopefully that's useful and thanks for watching.